Hey everybody, it's Brady. Hey, I just want to take a minute to talk about something that's very, very, very important that it seems like um, a lot of people either just don't care about or just don't understand or um, frankly, I really don't know what it is to be honest. Um, but I want to talk about um, voter education. Um, for the last week or so, uh, I've been going out with um, some of the campaigns and knocking doors like I tend to always do um, during campaign season. And I've been handing out literature and uh, talking to people about the candidates and um, sharing their platforms and ideas with people. And um, it baffles me the number of people that um, simply don't want to have anything to do with uh, politics, yet they are... Uh, so high up the list uh, for doors to be knocked that they literally vote in every election. So no matter how you generate the list, because you can go in and generate your, your door knocking list based on uh, a plethora of data points. So even if you're having the most um, restrictive of lists and you're only wanting to get the top uh, voters, the people that vote in every election, and you want to go knock only their doors so that you can trim down um, some of the time that it takes to, to do all this. Because it takes time. I mean, I've spent, uh, my wife and I have spent probably, I don't know, uh, 15 hours or so, 12 to 15 hours or so in the last week, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I don't know. Uh, we've knocked about 320 ish, 330 doors or so. Um, and uh, in that, um, we're only knocking the doors of the people that vote in every election, the people that tend to vote in the primaries and they tend to vote in the general elections. And if there's a school board election, they're voting in that. And so we're only knocking the doors of the, the highest percentage um, of voters. But when we're going to knock these doors and hand out literature, the number of people that are screaming at us and saying, go away, or we're not interested in the literature that you're handing out or so on and so forth. Um, it's, it's pretty astounding because let me be, let me be quite frank. Voter education is possibly, aside from election integrity, the biggest issue facing um, the Republican Party uh, today. Uh, people are voting based on a name uh, or based on a popularity contest. Uh, the more times they see the name, the more familiar they are with it. Uh, that's who they cast their vote for. But the reality is that um, they could have a soup sandwich for a platform, uh, but they get votes because of name generation, which honestly is based off of money. Right. So the richest people or the people that have the most campaign money, they're the ones that get their name out there the, the most because they can afford more signs and they can afford more literature and they can afford uh, to get uh, in front of people more frequently. But the reality is they may have a terrible platform. And we see this over and over and over again. It's how terrible politicians like James Lankford uh, continue to get elected. It's how terrible politicians uh, across the country um, like Mitch McConnell and all these guys is how they continue to get elected because people are refusing to uh, educate themselves on the voters and on their platforms. And let me just be quite frank in, in how I'm going to say this. You couldn't be more wrong than to not want to educate yourself uh, before going and casting a vote for or against a person. Now, it's one thing to to already kind of have your mind made up as to who you're going to vote for. I mean, I pretty much at this point know who I'm going to vote for um, uh, on the ballot. And if you don't know where to get your ballot or who's even on your ballot or the options for you to vote, you can go to Ballotopedia. Um, just Google Ballotopedia um, and it'll, it'll pop up and you can basically put in your address and um, it'll tell you exactly what Senate district you're in, exactly what House district you're in, exactly who uh, is on your ballot for the June 28th election for the primaries. Um, and what's important about educating yourself in this primary is it's important to understand that this is not Republicans going against Democrats. This is Republicans going against Republicans. So in a state like Oklahoma that is red as can be, where the vast majority of candidates that are elected to any elected office are um, Republicans, except for you know a few House districts and Senate districts in uh, the blue areas of Tulsa and Oklahoma City, and then obviously the city councils um, for those two cities, pretty much everywhere else is red as can be, right? So in the primary, if you don't pay attention to the primary and who you cast your vote for, um, then you can get stuck with having a James Lankford on a ballot. And when you go and you vote down ballot Republican on the general election in November, you just automatically cast in that vote for James Lankford. But the reality is you need to educate yourself because there are way better ca candidates out there 
than, than, than these people that are in, incumbent in the offices. You need to educate yourself on who, to, who has uh, a solid platform, whose beliefs align more uh, with yours than others, and who are just rhino Republicans who are basically Democrats that register as Republicans because it's the only way they can get elected in a state like Oklahoma. You need to educate yourself on these folks before you cast a ballot. Don't just go and cast a ballot and then uh, on on June twenty eighth and then and then be a back backseat Facebook driver on June twenty ninth and be complaining about how uh, the state of America is and the state of Oklahoma is uh, uh, because you didn't go educate yourself and do your part before you cast that ballot, right? And the same thing goes for um, actually going out in the primaries and casting a ballot. Did you know that only about a third of the registered voters actually go out in the primary and cast a ballot? That is a huge, huge, huge problem. Because I know that the majority of people complain, more than a third of registered voters complain, right? But you have no reason or business complaining if you're not going out and letting your voice be heard uh, on June 28th. And, and I don't remember exactly when it's the first, uh, the, uh, first week of November uh, there, or it's the, I guess the second Tuesday, whatever, in November um, for the general election. But if you're not going out and casting a ballot every single time or just about every single time that you have an opportunity to let your voice be heard, then you have no business letting your voice be heard the other 365 days of the year, period. I mean, there's, there, there's, there's no justification for it. Don't sit there on Facebook and complain about elected officials when you're not going out and letting your voice be heard. Now, if you're going out and letting your voice be heard, and then the wrong people get elected because other people didn't educate themselves, by, by all means, shout it from the rooftops. And, and do what I'm doing right now and call people out for it. Because let me just be frank, again, if you're not educating yourself on who is on your ballot and picking the, 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 the right candidate, there's a, in, in basically every election, there is a great candidate and there's usually a terrible candidate. But a lot of times the terrible candidate wins because they get uh, backing from all these other uh, 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 major, major um, uh, uh, financial contributors. Did you know that there are Republicans that are running that have received big sums of money from Democrat foundations. Did you know that? How do you know if you're going to cast a ballot for one of those people? How do you know those people don't owe somebody something once they get into office? I mean, in reality, pretty much everybody's going to owe somebody something once they get into office. Um, let's, let's just be real about it, right? Um, but I would rather see a guy that owes uh, a, a, pro, um, uh, a pro-life organization a favor or something rather than um, have the Kaiser Foundation backing a candidate and have that candidate get elected, right? So, so let's just be real. If you're not educating yourself on these voters and on their platforms and on their donations, where they're getting their donations from, how they're spending their money, the things that they're doing, making sure that they're running a, a faithful campaign uh, to their contributors and to their donors and to their supporters, um, and you're not actually physically going out and casting a ballot uh, for the primary and for the other um, uh, elections, school board elections, general elections, city council elections, and so on, you really have no business or right to complain about the state of the politics and the state of the city and the state of the state and the state of the country. You, you really don't. There's no justification for it. And you can, you can think whatever you want to think about me. I'm just calling it how it is. Um, I, have, I have had people, we've been going and passing out this literature, and I literally um, walk up to the door and these people peek at me through the blinds, right? And I walk up to the door with this literature to hand it out for some great candidates, right? There's a lot of great candidates running. Um, and I don't, ha- I don't hand out literature for sorry people. Um, James Lankford, you will never see me hand out his literature. Matter of fact, if I could get my hand on about a thousand of his, of his uh, uh, pieces of literature, I'd probably uh, have a bonfire with him or something, roast some, roast some s'mores or something. I'm just being honest, right? Um, but I'm handing out literature for these great candidates, right? And there's people that they'll peek out their blinds and I walk up to their door um, just to knock their door and ask them a couple questions and hand them some literature. Before I can even get to the door, they will open the door and they will be like, what do you want? And I'm like, well, I'm handing out uh, literature on behalf of David D'Ambroso or whoever I'm, I'm doing it for, right? And they'll be like, I'm not interested. Go away. Or um, some people will, they'll have their, their, their main door open, but their glass door will be closed and they'll scream, go away before you even get up to the door right? Um, you couldn't be more wrong if that's you. If you don't want to educate yourself before you cast the ballot, don't even go cast the ballot. Don't go cast the ballot because what you're doing is you're stabbing the rest of us in the back because the rest of us are out there educating ourselves. The rest of us are out there putting our boots on the ground and working to save America. And you're not helping by casting a ballot without education. There is literally zero reason to vote for a guy like James Lankford. There is very little reason to vote for a guy like Mark Wayne Mullen. 
right? There are There is very little reason to vote for hardly any of the incumbents, right? But you have to do the education to know that. You have to know uh, that, that James Lankford supports democratic ideologies from time to time. You have to know, I'm not even in Oklahoma City, but Stephanie Bice, Stephanie Bice voted for the, uh, the January 6th commission, right? The January 6th commission is like seven Democrats and three rhinos, right? So it's basically 10 anti-Trump people on the January 6th commission, right? But she voted for that, right? You, you, need, to, you need to know these things before you go out and cast a ballot, right? And you need to know what the opponents of these people uh, what their platform is, what they stand for, what their promises are. Do they stand for election integrity? Do they stand for an America first agenda? You may not agree with an America first agenda. That's fine. That's totally fine. That's your prerogative. But you need to know why you don't stand for it. And you need to know who stands for it and who doesn't so that you cast the correct ballot for the, for the correct person that you want. Not just because you saw the majority of signs for this person or um, you've always voted for this person or so on and so forth. I mean, there's a, there's a thousand bad excuses, right? But none of them, none of them are plausible. So anyways, I, I'm going to get off my rant. I, I think I've ranted long enough, um, but educate yourself. If you aren't sure about a candidate, um, ask, ask me. I, I either probably know the candidate personally, if it's here in Tulsa, or I probably know somebody who has a connection to a candidate, right? Um, it, ask, do your education, research, search them. A lot of these guys have platform, uh, have have websites or Facebook pages where they have their platforms listed. They have their three or five key things that they want to get done uh, in their two or four or six year term in office. Look it up. See what they want to get done. Look at their voting records. If they're an elected official already, if they're an incumbent, look at their voting records. Um, I can tell you that uh, there is a guy running as a Republican. Um, he's an incumbent, and he's got a the, he's got a better record voting record for Democrats than a lot of the Democrats, which is crazy that he's running as a Republican, and crazy that Republicans are supporting him. Um, he has for all the like Oklahoma Oklahomans for parental rights and all these conservative um, PACs that rate candidates. He's got like D and C ratings across all of these. Um, all of these ratings, but yet people are supporting him because they're not doing their education. They're not searching to find out the truth about these candidates. And that couldn't be a, more of a problem uh, for number one, the Republican Party, where we're at right now as a party, and number two, um, our state and our country. Right now, we are at a, 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 a precipice um, uh, for our liberty. Let's, let's just be real. Our country has fallen apart. We got a dodo bird um, that calls himself president, but um, we all know the truth of the election. And if you still deny it, I don't know what to tell you. Um, they have. If you think that they can arrest people uh, in, that were in the, inside the Capitol on January 6th based on cell phone data, then there's no way that you can acknowledge that the election wasn't stolen because they have, they have cell phone and video data of thousands of people stuffing multiple uh, ballots into boxes at multiple ballot boxes. What would, what cause would any person have to go to more than one, um, ballot box? They, they wouldn't, right? Like if you're going to go drop off your ballot, you go to one ballot box. You only have one ballot, right? Even if you're dropping off ballots for a family member, right? Uh, you may have two or three, right? If I, like if you're dropping it off for your wife, um, or whatever, you may have two ballots, right? But you're not going to go to two different ballot boxes or 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 different ballot boxes for that matter. Um, to drop those ballots off, right? Okay, so obviously, um, if, if, if we can use cell phone data for that, then we need to use cell phone data for this. So, but back to my point, like we, we have, our, our, our country is, is falling apart and and we are at, 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 at a, uh, an impasse, if you will, uh, in our country. And it is very important that we are putting the right people in office. We have to put people in office that are going to stand for the constitution, that are gonna stand for the rights of Americans uh, and that are going to support uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the American dream, um, capitalist economy, uh, and get things back on track. So anyways, take that and, um, chew on it a little bit, educate yourself and please cast a ballot on January 20 or excuse me on, uh, on June 28th. Otherwise I don't want to see you backseat Facebook driving on June 29th. Just going to be honest. Have a nice day.